In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a content carousel with audio without using any advanced actions or the widgets. My favorite thing about Adobe Captivate is from time to time, I discover something that I was completely unaware of. And in this video, I'm going to showcase such a feature. It's actually something that replaces the sometimes cumbersome on enter action where you want to set up your slide to look and behave a certain way. Let's get started. All right, so one of the things that inspired this particular video, of course, is the carousel widget, which I'm a big fan of. You can set up basically three pages in one. It's a great way to deal with cognitive load. It's a great way to chunk out your content. But the only problem with the carousel widget is that you can't add audio to each of these sub pages that are included in the carousel. You can only add audio to the slide itself. So I'm always looking for a way to do something with audio on each of the slides here. So let's just get rid of this particular block and we'll go down to page number two here. And here I have uh, four steps to conflict resolution. And what I've done is I've created essentially the same slide four times in a row. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to program these left and right arrows to simply go from slide to slide. And included on each of the slides, of course, is audio as well. So let me just play a little bit of this. Describe the behavior. Be specific and tell the person exactly what it was that offended you. This is an important first step and will help the person understand the problem. Okay, and I've done exactly the same thing on slide number three or the second of the four slides within this interaction. Same thing for the third one and the fourth one there. Now, what I used to do in the past is I would go into the interactions icon in the right hand toolbar and we would add an on interaction that would disable the left button here and we would do something similar with the right button on the last of the, in this case, four slides. But I've since learned that you don't actually need to do that. I discovered this quite by accident and I'm sharing it with all of you today. If you right click on any button, you can actually disable during publish. So, so long as you have a disabled state available for this button, which is easy enough to do, just enable the disabled state, it's going to show up and prevent the user from pressing the left arrow and they can only press the right arrow. Obviously here I can go back and forth, back and forth. And then on the fourth slide, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to right click and I'm going to disable during publish kind of does the same thing as the on interaction I used to do. But now of course, I have uh, less need to actually write any advanced actions for this particular interaction here. So let's test this out and see how it works. Describe the behavior. Be specific and tell the person exactly what it was that offended you. This is an important first step and will help the person understand the problem. So you can see here my left arrow in this carousel is automatically disabled just by making that selection from the context menu. And of course I can move forward. Express your feelings using I statements. Don't just say the behavior was wrong. Tell them how it made you feel. Use I statements to help your coworker understand how their actions or comments impact. And then the third one. Specify the appropriate behavior. It's an essential step to explain what acceptable behavior would be and how you expect them to behave. And last but not least. Identify the consequences. Finally, describing what steps you will take if you do not see a change in their behavior will help them understand the seriousness of the matter. These steps should be based on the reporting process from the harassment policy. So it works perfectly and I haven't had to write any kind of advanced action. The only thing I needed to do was disable the first left arrow and the last right arrow 
in these series of slides. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.